It's another beautiful day in the neighborhood. Good morning, everybody. Here's truly Howie Chiswick. We're into our 18th season here on the Talk of Akron. Mid-America's highest rated midday talk show. You're the lovely people who make us what we are. We, do, don't, we don't do actually anything. We just sit here and answer the phone. You are the stars of the show, and let's go talk to the stars. WNIR, go ahead, please. Good morning, good morning. Time to rise and shine. Are you there, please? Last call. He's at the talk of Akron, WNIR. What should you do when it happens to you? Wait a second. I'll get my echo chamber. Oh, yes, please What do. should you do when it happens to you? <laughs> this is our daily feature on a Monday on a No Subject Monday. <laughs> no Subject Monday <laughs> on <laughs> WNIR. <laughs> boop, boom. Okay. Well, my good friend Chet... <clears throat> Best good friend. He's a good friend. He's, He's good. not my best friend. Well, He's a new no. friend. Well, He's a new nice friend, Chet. New friend. Got a lovely family. Chet and his lovely wife are upstairs, and I think his 14-year-old son, Ryan, is in the, in the den watching TV or the basement watching a movie, wherever the VCR is. And somebody heard some noise. It is 20 minutes to 12 midnight on a Saturday night, you know, when the family's winding down or mm -hmm. is wound down. And most of the lights in the house are out. And there, in middle America suburbia, Ryan hears some noises, okay? Clunk, clunk, thunk, thunk. And he thought maybe, you know, wasn't there a lot of rain? Well, you didn't have it here. We had, whew, we had ferocious lightning. Oh, did you really? So I'm going to take an educated guess. Maybe Ryan thought the window had broken open or oh, something sure. like that. Anyhow, he says, gee willikers. God. I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt, I very, doubt it. <coughs> knowing Ryan, I doubt if he said, gee willikers. But anyway, <laughs> he then went up to his upstairs and told his dad he heard some noises he didn't think was quite kosher. And being that he goes to Catholic school, I doubt if he said that either. <laughs> either way, so Ryan's dad, Chet, comes downstairs, and they catch in the act. A robber has all, I mean, the guy is right there. They're this far apart. No, Five, sir. He walks right down to, I guess, the oh. back. They have a, like a little office or a den area where they have the, the VCR and the computer and the TV that goes with it. Yeah. The, the, thl the slug. This is in beautiful South Euclid, Ohio. The guy had already taken the TV outside, put it on the grass. He was in the process of going for the computer when Chet held him at bay with his... Is this the index finger? Yes. Uh, well, it was dark. He said, don't move, you mother-loving individual. I'm sure that's what he said. Or something like that. Close enough. And he froze the man in his tracks with his index finger. Did he really do that? He has a 38 caliber works, huh? 38 caliber index finger. And I said, my goodness, Chet, you know, gosh, Rooney, if the other guy had a gun, his gun might have shot your finger, see? Or another part of your body. Well, anyway, the robber, because in South Euclid they have stupid robbers, believed Chet's finger. He put down the computer and ran. See? I don't know if he was ever caught, but he certainly left without the goods. The moral oh. of the story is, before you leave your bedroom, always load your finger. Stop, or I'm going to blow your mother-loving head off. Now, that's not an exact quote. That's how I remember it yesterday. When paraphrase. He, that's a paraphrase. So, Chet, if you didn't say that, that's how I remember. I thought you said that. That's now. Frightening, though. What should you have do? What is the Ohio law? What is the Ohio law? What? You couldn't have shot the guy, could you? Because you would have been arrested. Well, he wasn't about to shoot him with his finger. It wasn't loaded. But if you did have a gun, could you shoot somebody well, who's robbing your house? No, you cannot, because Ohio is a wuss. It's, uh, Ohio is a, a wimp a wuss, wuss state. Of it all. That's right. Take the word heart off your license plate. Ohio is uh, the wuss of it all. So here, according to the Ohio Revised Code, is what Chet should have done. See? Ryan says, oh, gosh, I think there's a burglar. Then he goes up and tells uh, Chet and the lovely Yvonne and, and their daughter. Then they go, oh, let's follow the Ohio Revised Code and allow the man to steal everything he wants. Let's exit through the back door and then call police while the robber gets away with everything. With all our things. Yes. Now, frankly, that was a very similar story in South Euclid to what happened at Akron U when the lady called me, the college student called me Friday. She caught four slugs, or was it five? 
I think it was four inner city type slugs robbing her in her apartment at Akron U. She caught them in the act. So she called the Akron police and says, they're in my apartment right now. And, and they were there in 30 seconds. That was almost, almost 10 to 15 minutes. So they got out and stole everything. And then this other young lady sees them running down the sidewalk of the streets of Akron, and she calls police, and they didn't respond at all. So I'd like to tell the people at Akron U, do what Chet did. Threaten to kill them with your finger. But if you're in broad daylight, though, they would see it was just no, your no, finger. No, no, no. Well, I, I don't, yeah, that's true. They would see that, you know. It's really not quite. Right. That doesn't even look like a gun. Yeah, it's a very bad record killing people with your finger. Do you think Chet did the right thing, or did he yes. place himself at risk not knowing if the uh, South Euclid uh, criminals, by the way, South Euclid is up to the north. It's a middle-income class with a lot of lovely, ple a lot of lovely people. I think he did do the right thing. Sure, he put, every, he, well, he he put himself at risk, but at the same time... He certainly didn't plan it. You know, it was just no, spontaneous. you just do what pops into your head. Yeah, stop or I'm going to blow your mother-loving head off. Obviously, his mother loved him. There are a lot of thieves in South Euclid. They came from Cleveland. You see that? Oh, they did? Yeah, there's a lot of... Better goods. There's a, a, lot, of, uh, a lot of thieves in Akron. Where did they come from? Uh, Akron. Cleveland and Michigan. You know that? A lot of Michigan license plates. Why doesn't the Akron authorities arrest everybody with a Michigan license plate? You know they're a drug dealer because you can't, you can't sell drugs in Michigan. Did you know that? We, you can't sell drugs here either, but people no, do. No, 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 no. <laughs> they've, got that, uh, they've got that law. If you have more than uh, several hundred grams of cocaine, it's life in prison, no parole. I think it's uh, 600, five, 580, 480. Haven't you ever heard that law? Yeah, I've heard that a lot. You can't sell big-time drugs in Michigan, so they come to Ohio. And that's the truth. All right, so if you would like to comment, did Chet do the right thing? I thought it was, I thought it was heroic. I thought it was very brave. In fact, Chet, if I find my bell, did you ever notice that Stan leaves the place in sort of disarray? Oh, it's yeah. over here. Do you suppose Stan's house is as neat as he leaves the studio? <laughs> All right, so we're going to give Chet, who, by the way, is a school teacher. Well, Very congratulations, and, Chet. And a, and a high school coach. Chet gets our bell of the day after I take the dust and the ashes off it. <clears throat> Am I allowed to say that? Sure. Secondary smoke, secondary ashes. You have to work here, too. Going to kill this talk show host and that news person right there. I'm not saying nothing, because think if we were in the Philippines. Oh, no. Why is God punishing the Philippines? Commies. That's what I call well, their... God doesn't care. Hey, why did God... Zap the Bangladeshis, not a Christian nation, said a caller two weeks ago. <clears throat> now, you don't have to buy this, but remember, there are Americans who think this way. <clears throat> God is killing the Filipinos because the communists in the mountains, who, of course, communism is, is anti-God, are getting zapped. They're getting ashed out. It's uh, not only Ash Wednesday, it's Ash every day for them. Oh. <clears throat> Moving on. I do have some other subjects, but moving on, here's my zinger of the day. Ready? Ready. Uh, the EPA and the mafia is tied together. There's no doubt that the environmentalists, and I won't say mafia because that's not nice. Some of my best friends are from Youngstown. Uh, I'll say underworld, see? Oh, you mm. cannot burn your garbage. You know what we used to have in our house? We used to have an incinerator, like a big old a warm, barrel back. We had a warm morning gas incinerator. We'd take all of our stuff and dump it in there, and it would go, whew, and it would be done. Why don't we still have, do we still have those? Let's pollute the air. Who are you kidding me? See, the underworld bought all this property, and they said, what do you want to do with it? Make it a grocery store? They said, no, we already own all the grocery stores in Cleveland. Bum, bum, bum. Anyhow, right? <laughs> Am I allowed to say that? Sure. Ends in a v ended in a vowel. Remember wow, those grocery Lord. stores? Am I allowed to say that? All right, anyhow, so the, the underworld bought all this property, and they didn't know what to do with it. Should we make a Disney World? Nah, no money in it. So they said, we'll get the environmentalists to get come into our side, and we'll create this theory. Nobody will make up this scandal about the ozone layer. <laughs> we'll make up this thing about the ozone layer, and then we'll make up this, we'll buy off a couple of scientists, and we'll come up with this global warming garbage, okay? Notice how it ties in, because I'm talking about garbage. So the uh, underworld, I won't say mafia, because they're not, they're nice. I mean, but there's other members of the underworld. 
<laughs> I like that. I like. Oh Austin. yeah, of course you do. Some of my best friends are so from, from yes, Youngstown, Austin, Austin. <laughs> Moving on. So the um, underworld bought off the environmentalists, bought off a few professors, and bought off some scientists. I don't buy that. They it. made this whole thing, and all of a sudden, somebody said, "Don't burn your garbage, bury it." Okay. <clears throat> and the and the underworld said, "Oh, isn't that convenient? We own all the landfills, right?" What a coincidence. What a coincidence. Luck just strikes. So we'll know. be happy to charge all the local governments and all the businesses all this money so that you can take your garbage, which you can't burn anymore, and put in the underworld's landfills. And, gee, since they're filling up, we'll have to increase our rates. Now, isn't that a convenient little story? Now, let me just put a little zinger on that. If every American burned all its garbage all summer in all of America... You wouldn't have the pollution output of Mount Kilimanjaro up your nose in the Philippines. Mount Pinatubo? Whatever. It's third world nation, isn't it? Bunch of little beasties running around looking for egg rolls. I mean, isn't that what the Philippines are? <coughs> by the I way, one of my... They seemed like all very nice my, people when I saw them. One of my television. best friends, by the way, is from the Philippines. <laughs> so we say this thing. They seem nice? Sure. They don't know from nothing. We save their butt from the Japanese. They still don't like us. I say smack them on the head. God's punishing the Filipinos because they didn't kiss the ring of MacArthur. That's what it's all about. You're laughing. Why are you laughing? I don't know. I just find this all so humorous. All right. Well, the moral of the story is, so how come the American environmentalists don't give a rat's petunia about this Filipino volcano? You'll also th notice the American uh, environmentalists aren't saying a rat's petunia about the, for how long has it been? What, a hundred days? All those oil wells burning out of control? Half the world is being darkened with soot. And the EPA wants to make sure you can't run your warm morning gas incinerator. Now, give me a break. It's got to be because the underworld says so. What do you think? I don't think the underworld has anything to do with the environmentalist. Oh, you don't? Uh, no, I, I think don't. they bought them off. I moving don't. on, moving on. <laughs> uh, I was just kidding. I like the underworld. Uh, in fact, uh, Jackie <laughs> Presser was a personal friend of oh, mine. Oh, was he really? That's right. He was a nice man. Went to a barbecue together. Uh, I think Reagan was there. <laughs> no pun intended. Reagan was there. Uh, over the weekend, Akron surpassed <coughs> the murder rate of all of last year. Congratulations to you. Akron's got another murder for you. If you wait long enough, you'll be next. And the mayor's going on vacation. Poop, poopy doo. Right? Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Who cares? When's the last time? We, when's the last time we saw the mayor of Akron? Um, you mean us? You and I? No, no, not just us. Just I mean, like dealing people? with dealing with a real problem. Uh, not kissing babies uh. and dedicating buildings for Vern Rife. I'm sorry. That's right. We even saw Tom <laughs> Sawyer when he was mayor. We even saw Mayor Ballard when he was mayor. Right? I wasn't around oh, you weren't when here? Mayor Ballard was I in can't office. Re Last time I saw Plasquelic is when he appeared on my show in a debate. How many years ago was that? Oh, about four or five. Okay, moving on. So congratulations, Akron. We have now surpassed last year's murder total. Hey, don't worry. Youngstown surpassed all of last year's murder total weeks ago. That's right. What's the connection? What's the to-do? Why is Akron slash Youngstown and Columbus setting all-time murder records? Doodly-doo. I don't know why. I don't know. I don't know why. Moving on. Happy Father's Day to you, my ex-wife. I've decided to kill the children and commit suicide. Well, that's it's a real... It's all your fault. That's a real winner. You know how they talk about... Uh, Ex-husbands are real deadbeats? I'm beginning to believe that. This is the third case of, I want to get back at my ex-wife, so let me have visitation and I'll murder the children. That happened, uh, what was that, in Pennsylvania? Was that, yeah, was it Pennsylvania? <clears throat> I don't know, I have to go look, I have it right here somewhere. So we have a whole pile of stuff have a, right there. That's right, I've been told before I have piles. <laughs> uh, here it is, um, Clinton County, is that, oh, Beach Creek, Pennsylvania, nice place. Uh, John Calvin Smith. Gee, that sounds religious. Right? Oh, it sure does. John Calvin. That sounds religious. Are they, are they having a party in the other room? I think so. Oh, that's the part of our station who doesn't actually work while the rest of us uh, give us number one ratings. Uh, John Calvin Smith murdered his youngsters aged 10, 6, and 4. Uh, Smith then shot himself while ambulances headed for his home. Oh, boy. <coughs> My philosophy is, if you're an ex-husband... Don't kill your children. And you're going to murder the children and yourself. Do it the sensible way. Kill, kill yourself, yourself first. first. 
That's see, a good idea. and then kill the children. That's a very good idea. Now, for those little old ladies who didn't get that, you see, that's a joke. Because if you kill yourself first, then you can't kill the children, nice ladies. See, that's what we're trying to do. We're going to be speaking for the Alliance Rotary Yay. on Thursday in Alliance, the Alliance Country Club. I'm looking forward to that. Should be, I hear we have a huge audience yes, in Alliance. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. But they're all your fans, not mine. Oh, no, they're all your they fans. They like me a little, but they love, they love you. They love you. VW has come up with a new idea for a car. To save energy, when you pull up to the stoplight, the car shuts off momentarily. And then when you step on the accelerator, it starts up again. So no more exhaust fumes at the corner. Oh, good. Not save that. the air. Save the air. Save and the air. And you could burn your trash. This is an old subject. Reagan and Bush went golfing, and they told those stupid reporters one more time they had nothing to do with delaying the hostages. So now that Bush and Reagan both said it on the same day, the subject's over. But here's Gary Sick, a former Carter employee, and the eight hostages who he has selected, all Carter employees. This is all a plot by Rosalind Carter. You heard it first. For all I know, you might have heard it last, too. Okay. Oh, another murder in Akron. Just put that right there. Nobody cares. <clears throat> Dallas, the city, not the TV show. Curfew, all youths, nobody cares. I need somebody to explain to me, because I don't understand this. If you are knowledgeable about money and the law, read the subject story on the front page of The Plain Dealer, Inheriting a Nightmare. Innocent woman gets the tab for lawyer's lavish ways. Now, I know that in America, no person is ever legally responsible <clears throat> for the debt of a second person. So how can the judge, Agnes Lally, who was executor of the estate of your best friend, has been told by a probate judge <clears throat> she must repay the $38,000 that the lawyer stole. Why does she have to repay it? I asked you first. She was the executor of... The, her best friend's will. Okay. The lawyer she put in charge of the estate stole the money. What a slime ball. Now the uh, judge says she has to repay the estate 38000 so she could pay the relatives who want their money. Why does she have to do it? Why isn't the lawyer responsible? Yeah, if the lawyer has the money, find the lawyer, bring him to court. Well, the lawyer doesn't with... have the money because he was living in an $858,000 house in Westlake trying to impress his teenage son, who was an equestrian Olympic potential. Oh, yeah, right. That's what they all say. All I know is this sounds like another bozo idiot judge in America, where idiot judges are commonplace. Moving on. <coughs> Let's see here. You see one night with the air conditioning on? See what yeah, happens yeah, again? Yeah, just a mess. I'm fine till I come here with smoke and dust. Oh, boy, oh, boy. I wonder if they have that much smoke and dust at that other station. Uh, <laughs> elsewhere, worldwide cases of AIDS. <coughs> or worldwide cases of AIDS. <coughs> they say that this is it. <coughs> Clear my throat one more time. I'm going to take a sip of coffee. Go right go ahead. ahead. <coughs> do, 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 Thank you very much. Do. If there was very little AIDS in America, and technically on paper, there really is very little AIDS in America, <coughs> the third world is coming down with AIDS, and they're all going to die. Are we worried? <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> There's just too much smoke in the studio. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this today. Yes, you will. You think so? Yeah, don't scare us here. <coughs> no, I will, You'll don't, be able to didn't have, have anything wrong water, with my voice like when I got here. No, I'm all right. Everybody on the station smokes, except me. I'm the one who's supposed to live forever, but they're trying to kill me. <laughs> okay, let's try again. <clears throat> me, 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 me. They are saying that the third world is going to die of AIDS. They're going to kill off the whole thing. This is either from God or Howard said Mother Nature is thinning out the herd. If we know that the rest of the world has AIDS, and America has very little AIDS, technically, on paper, will we isolate the rest of the world from us? Which, of course, the civil libertarians will detest, but, of course, it'll bring about an end to us all. I really do believe that AIDS is the plague, as projected, you know, through the, um, what, Europe? 
Well, what what century was that? The the Dark Ages, oh, right? Yes, yes, yes. The Dark like Ages. The Black yes. Plague. Okay. Uh, speaking of, I keep hearing it's impossible to get AIDS from your doctor, but there's every another doctor. but every day there's another story in the paper. It's impossible to get AIDS from your doctor and dentist, but every day there's another story of a doctor. This week, Doctor Philip Benson, three hundred twenty-eight patients. Uh, notices are going out. He may have given AIDS to all of them. Or none of them. All of them? Despite wearing two pairs. Despite wearing two pairs of gloves while delivering babies and performing other procedures. So then I ask you, how could he place them at risk? Oh, don't worry, they say. Don't worry. He wore two pairs of gloves? This week will bring troubling news to 328 patients of Dr. Philip Benson. The notices say he may have given AIDS virus to the patients despite wearing two pair of gloves while delivering babies and performing other procedures after he was diagnosed. Well, that just 75% uh, of all the doctors say doctors should not work if you have AIDS. See? So eventually we're either going to kill ourselves or we're going to do something about this. There's so many AIDS stories, I'm just going to leave them right there. Um... I'll save my Anlanders for letter. Tom Watkins, Bill. Ohio wants this law that no one can get parole unless the parolee-to-be has a high school diploma. Agree or disagree? Well, that's what Tom Watkins is pushing for. This way, if you are some educated, uneducated idiot and you're up for parole and you're a bad person, you would have to study to get your GED in prison. You cannot get out of jail. That's wonderful. That's a good idea. However, the uh, liberals will say, well, where are we going to put all these people? We're going to put them at the liberals' houses. <laughs> all right. So, okay, there's some subjects there. Let's see here. Anything else I have not mentioned? Yes. Dun -da -da -da. Dun -da -da -da. Is somebody going to die at the former Silver Meadows Apartments? Doodly do. I hope not. Tensions high in an exclusive outstanding story by the fine newspaper in red. That's not sensationalistic. <laughs> the Record Courier. Tenants of Kent Complex on edge as violence mounts. Tensions high in Kenwood, you see. It used to be called Silver Meadows. And once again, this radio program tells you the truth on the radio. This is not our view. <coughs> but the neighbors call it Silver Ghettos. We do not call it that here at this program. We call it Kenwood. But on the street, it is called Silver Ghettos. I wonder why. Why do you think? I have no idea. What could it be? Could be. It says she is the mother of two who is afraid to let her children go out of the apartment. At night, guns are fired and people yell obscenities across the parking lot. Now, I've seen the former Silver Meadows, and the building is a very nice building. The bricks have not caused any crime the pavement have not caused any crime, then I must assume that the people who live there are sleazeballs or something. You can make that assumption. But maybe I won't make the assumption. But I'll it's... I'll just let it sit and let the audience tell okay. me. Okay. Several times since she's moved into her apartment, large fights have broken out, uh, drawing what looked into 50, uh, a riot, 50 participants and spectators. Some of her neighbors say the fights are racial. Well, what has that got to do with being known as Silver Ghettos? Others say it's outsiders, you know, the same ones who caused the Kent State shootings came in probably from New York. It's a scary place to raise children, but she's unable to move because she cannot afford the deposit for a new apartment in a better neighborhood. So now here's a very nice lady. This is the Kenwood Court area in the Tree City's most densely populated apartment complex. Somebody's going to get killed. True or false? I'd like to hear the truth. What's really happening in Silver Ghettos?
so that we do not pick on just one uh, housing area, we will ask the question, uh, do you live in a dangerous place? This is the Talk of Akron. WNIR 100 FM. In the Akron area, dial 673-1234. Outside Akron, call toll-free.